it didn't go exactly the way he was hoping to in January, but he gets the chance to redeem himself on May 31st. It is none other than Chris Ventura. Chris, my man, I, I apologize for the somber intro, but uh, how have you been since that January showing a couple of months ago? Yeah, no worries, bro. Yeah, I've been good. I've just, uh, you know, been back in the lab training. Um, nothing really changed. Just that same week went back, started training and uh, getting better. Um, and looking forward to the next one. So that's just, that's how it's been. No, I, I mean, you looked absolutely fantastic in that debut. And and I just want to ask you, I mean, what were your thoughts and, and what were kind of your feelings about what was a controversial stoppage? I mean, no doubt about it. Everybody has an opinion about it. What were your thoughts uh, when that all went down? Yeah, uh, in the moment, um, I was uh, a little bummed because um, – when he came in after I, you know, the finishing sequence, I remember thinking like every time he was going to, every time I opened up with the combo, he was going to shoot. So um, I remember throwing like a hook, hook, and then I was trying to frame off him because I knew he was going to shoot. And then, yeah, I just threw the knee um, at his chest. And uh, when he fell down, I followed up because I didn't see his head like whip back when I hit that knee. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've done Muay Thai and then sparring when you hit dudes to the face. With a knee, you know, it, they're out in coat. Like, they don't really know what's going on for a while. And then, like, I don't know. As soon as he hit the ground, he started complaining about a knee to the head. So I was, I was like, I don't know. If I need, if I did knee him in the head, he might have, you know, been un, not responsive, but he might have been a little like out of it for a while. So, but it is what it is, man. I got to show my skills. And even though I didn't get the W, I was, uh, I got to show what I can do. And so I'm just looking forward to the next one. Yeah, you absolutely showed what you can do. And I think it makes a lot of people really excited for May 31st, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. I remember seeing videos, you, your coach Marco, as well as the rest of your team kind of celebrating in the back. Despite the no contest, did it feel like a win in a lot of ways? I mean, obviously you passed that test with flying colors. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say, uh, you know, I was just happy that I... Um my boy Taylor went out and did his thing. And then I went out and showed that I could be a savage. So even though I didn't get the W um, at the end of the day, I got my experience and the amateurs and I uh, got to show everyone like that I can get down and what I could do. So obviously I didn't get the W, but it was still cool to go out there under the lights and turn up with my buddies. So. What was it like waiting so long? Because I think it, it had to have been five to 10 minutes of just just void space and time i mean nothing was going on it was just the official trying to decide what the actual you know verdict was going to be what was that like having to wait there in the cage you're opposite you know dustin the coaches are kind of chirping at each other it's a little it's getting a little contentious in there what was it like for you i'm not gonna lie man i was like i was high i just you know finished that dude and or what i thought was a finish and then my best friends marco can't mg all of them are coming in the cage so i'm just i'm just off a uh like a surreal moment for me. So I wasn't really too bothered in the moment or even thinking about it. I was just like, hell yeah, I whooped this dude. And now my homies are coming in here with me. That's all I was really thinking of in the moment. But, and then after I was like, damn, when they gave me that no contest, I was like, I should have thrown an uppercut, but it is what it is. You know, next time I'll throw that uppercut and we'll see if it changes. I really wanted to ask you, do, do you want that fight back with Ireland? Just, just to kind of solidify, like, I am the better fighter. I mean, obviously, like, there's still a contest to have if you want that. to. But in your perspective, do you want to just really prove and cement, like, that wasn't a fluke the first time. I'll do it again. Oh, yeah, man. I'll do it again. Like, and I just want to fight. So whoever um, whoever the opponent is, like, if it's Dustin, if it's another guy, like, I just want to get in there and, you know, show what I could do. So he knows what I could do. He felt it. Like, man to man at the end of the day, um, we both know. And then like, I respect him a lot. So if he wants to do it again, I'll give him that opportunity to get it back. But it's not really about getting one over on anyone for me. It's just about um, showing up the day and doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, that's the only thing I really think about. I remember talking to you right before your debut and you mentioned to me that you were a basketball and football guy who made that transition a little bit later on. What was that transition like for you to go from a team sport, ball sport centric type of game to now being an individualized sport in such as fighting? Yeah, man. Um, 
obviously in the fighting, there's still that team aspect where we spar and we work together to get to, um, you know, get our fights and everything. But it was a huge uh, change for me. Like every, like competing since a youngster, it was team, you know, it was not just me or um, if I lose, it's all on me, you know, it was damn, if we lost, it's on us. So it was a huge change. Um, just getting used to that, you know, like no one can mess up but you. And um, I wouldn't say put any more pressure because I was already like, I wanted those big time shots and I wanted to be that crunch time player. So if anything, I say I was, this is what I should have been doing earlier because that's where the big time is. You know, there's no crunch shot. It's the crunch time for the whole fight. So um, it wasn't too much of a change. Um, I was kind of scrappy and a dog in football and basketball. So translating to bas or, uh, MMA, it was uh, obviously a little bit of a change, but not too much. I mean, I was getting worked in jiu-jitsu, though, man. Oh, for, like, my first year and a half, two years, I was getting worked, bro. But now I'm – now I lo – like, I fell in love with jiu-jitsu. So, and who knows? Now I'm shooting, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's an aspect of, I think, your game that a lot of people don't really know about. You are a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. You've been training it for quite some time at this point. Are you looking forward to, at some point, potentially showcasing that skill set that you haven't shown just yet? Oh, for sure. Um, I'm in, I'm grappling with Marco and, um, at Agima. So like, and they have a lot of good wrestlers and grapplers. So I know I got that in my bag and this is mixed martial arts. You know, I want to show everyone thinks I'm just a striker or a boxer, but, um, I'm a mixed martial artist. You know, I get down, I can wrestle, I can do jujitsu, I can box, I can kickbox and, um, yeah, whatever opportunity opens up, you know, I might shoot this fight. I might take him down. You know, if he shoots on me, we'll see. Have you ever, I, I don't love asking these types of questions because it kind of puts you in an awkward spot, but do you think that you are as good a football and basketball player as you are now a fighter? Do you think you got those sports to the extent that you have fighting in kind of the short stint that you have been training for MMA? Um, I would say that I am a better mixed martial artist than a basketball and football player, but Playing football and basketball, like, since a young kid definitely helped my athleticism. And I noticed that I can – I think that helps me switch stances a lot where a lot of people struggle. Um, like, I don't really think about it, and I'm already Southpaw Orthodox. Um, and I think that helped my game a lot, you know, the athleticism, explosiveness. Um, you see a lot of uh, martial artists, and they're not, per se, like, super athletic. Um, so I think that helped me get a jump start in that area of martial arts. But um, yeah, I think I'm a better martial artist than I am basketball player or football player like ever in my life. I think of Phil Rowe and Jamal Hill. Both of them come from the basketball world. Both of them are very, very qualified strikers in their own right. Is there some sort of direct translation from basketball to specifically striking? Oh, uh, I would I would say so. Like you even see guys like Corey Sandeg and he was a hooper. Um, I think it's just like playing basketball, you're super swift. Like you're always on your toes quick and just like on striking, you should be on your toes moving. Um, not really staying still the whole time, just like basketball, you know, you're chopping your feet, playing defense or you're setting picks and rolls, but you're always moving. So I would say basketball is like crucial. You know, it helped me a lot. Spoken like a true hooper. Um, <laughs> are you from Park City or like, where are you from? Because I don't, I used to work in Park City. I used to be a sports director over there. Were you, did you go to Park City High School or where are you from? No, I'm from West Valley City, Utah, and I went to Hunter High School. Okay. Marines, baby, let's go. <laughs> so so how did you find your way up to Rise Boxing? Yeah, so I met Marco, you know, and uh, Marco's a savage, man. I would see, like, things he'd do in the gym or his fights, and I was like, like, damn, I need to get like this guy. So I just started working with Marco, and, uh, you know, he's up at Rise. He's been up there for a while, so – um. You know, if you want to be good in anything, you got to make sacrifices. And I was like, man, I need to get like that guy. And, you know, I wanted to be like him. So I and he invited me. He was my bro. So he's like, hey, come train with me and let's like let's take over the world. And, uh, you know, I haven't looked back and I've been Marco has been my day one since day one. You know, like anything that guy tells me to do, I'll do it without like even questions. So I've been with that guy since I started. And, yeah, when. When I'm done, I'm gonna be with that guy. When when did you two meet? Where did you meet? Oh, we met over at the pit, probably in like what was it during COVID, like 2020. 
20, 21 ish. So yeah, we met over there and, uh, man, man, I just haven't looked back. I mean, that guy I've been riding since my first Muay Thai fight, my first boxing fight, first MMA fight. And to my last ones, I'm gonna be with that guy. You know, you talk about your team, you've mentioned them in almost every single answer you've given. What does your team mean to you? Kent, Marco, MG. I mean, there's so many names, but what do they mean to you personally? And as well as your, your journey as an athlete, I should say. Yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie. Marco and MG and all them, they like, they saved my life. It was, you know, you don't really know, you know, life's crazy. And, uh, I didn't really know where I was going and, you know, I'm, I was a hothead growing up and, uh, you know, I just needed family and, um, they're just like me. They wanted to be great. And so we built off that kinship of, you know, wanting to be great and pushing each other, but they're the world to me. Like, you know, whenever Marco, MG or can't have a problem, if they, you know, all than any of them, I'm, you know, they could hit me up or vice versa in camp, you know, I'm, whatever they need hold pads for them feed them water like this is like our family you know as far as one goes i feel like that's as far as we can all go and every day i can take inspiration from them because they're savages i see them work hard i see what they do on you know their fights and you know they're just great people in the end and at the end of the day i just want to be with great people you know it doesn't even matter about them the the fighting i just want to be with good people and they're the best people i've you know i've i've met so I love them. Where do you think you would be if you didn't cross paths with these people? Yeah, man, I don't know. That's a, uh, I don't know. That's a, uh, you know, you think about it and it's like, I don't know, because, you know, I remember my mom and dad are like, always telling me, they knew I was a hot head. So they would tell me like, be careful. And, but I don't know. And, um, I'm happy that I don't know, you know, like I'm happy I am where I am and I'm just chasing my dream and I'm chasing it with the best guys that I had ever imagined. This might be a silly question because I think I do know it, but I'd love to hear your verbalization of it. What, what is the dream for you? Yeah. Um, the dream is to, so we all make it, you know, um, I know they say, uh, mixed martial arts is a, like you fight by yourself, but at the end of the day, I just want to inspire the kids like me, like my nephews, um, my homies that are out there still like, I want them to chase something and just put their mind into it. Like, obviously it, it gets hard, but the dream is just to motivate your people. And, um, I remember I told my grandpa I was going to win him a championship, you know, in football. And I never did that. Uh, so really, you know, when I, uh, I want to get to a big show, the UFC or something and, one strap and then take that back, take that back to Mexico. So um, my grandpa could see it. Well, how, uh, how important is your relationship with your grandpa? Yeah, man. Um, he's, have you heard that quote where they say like good time or strong or what is it? Like bad times create hard men, which create, you know, weak men or whatever. Tough times create tough people or something yes. like that. Yeah. Yeah, so my dad is such a great guy, man, and um, like I talk about my pops a lot, and the way I talk about my pops, my grandpa or my dad talks about my grandpa, and uh, he lived in Mexico, so I couldn't see him all the time. But you know, when I was little, we they'd come over, and you know, it meant the world to me. So my it's just crazy because my dad's such an awesome guy, and it's just. You know, my grandpa did great things for my dad that did great things for me. And and I know my pops misses him like crazy. And my pops is one of my best friends. So I don't know, like, how I even, you know, think or cope. So I just, man, family's everything to me at the end of the day. It really is. Like, some people say that or, um, you know, but at the end of the day, I don't really care about anything but my people's. So it's just, they're, they're everything to me. What do your dad and, and your grandpa and all your family think about your dream and, and also what you've been able to showcase thus far? Yeah, my dad's uh my dad supported me through the, all my athletic career. He's just he's always known since I was a youngster, I was a little bit different. And I remember him telling me that whatever I want to do, he'll be proud of me because he knows I'm gonna give him my all. And watching me fight now too, um, 
you know, growing up, we loved boxing. We'd watch it at my uncle's and family events. We'd watch, you know, Oscar De La Hoya or Floyd or Manny Pacquiao. So I know he loves it because growing up, he, you know, boxed all the time in Mexico, got down. So I know now he's like, damn, my son's living my dreams, you know. So I know he loves it. And uh, yeah, he supports me in every way. Did you always have big dreams growing up as a kid? Yeah, man. Probably when I was like six or seven, like I remember, I forget what fight it is, but we were at my uncle's house and everyone was watching the TV. It's a boxing fight and everyone's watching going crazy. And I was like, like, why is everyone going so crazy? It was just, you know, people fighting, but I just didn't want to, I just wanted that pressure. You know, I wanted to feel the pressure of a shot clock going down and me drain it or one man and one man. And it's the 12th round. Like it just always excited me, I guess, since I was little, like the way my uh, family would watch or how excited they'd get. I just like never saw like anything. Like I didn't see anyone get excited to that watching basketball or like football. Like people would just get so crazy, you know, and the energy is so different. So I was just like, I need to be in there. I need it. You know? And then my dad was a musician growing up, like he sang. Um, so I remember he he's a showman, man. And I think um I think I get that from him, like wanting to be on the stage and wanting that light and you know, feeling all that adrenaline. I think I get that from him. Can you recall a specific time in your life, be it a football game, a basketball game, or you know, this fight last January? When have you ever felt the most pressure going into any sort of athletic event? The most pressure into any athletic event? I would say I feel it every time I compete because I I know what I'm capable of. I give my heart and my time. Like, that's all I do is I grind. So the pressure is going to be there every time I compete, but not really pressure, more like um, excitement. I'm just excited to see what I could do in those moments or what I'm going to do this time, you know? Um, but it's every time, every time I play football or basketball or Muay Thai boxing fights, I'm like, it's still going to be something different, but it's that same feeling. What is it about this dream? What is it about your aspirations that make you work so hard? Because not only you talking about it throughout this interview, but everyone I know who talks about you and is trained with you says that you are the hardest worker in a room full of them. What is it about you and how you were brought up that makes you work as hard as you do? My parents, man, like growing up, I never seen my dad say, I don't want to go to work or my mom say that, you know, my pops had cancer. And even when he had cancer, he was going to work and then still hitting the gym after, which was crazy. You know, um, my mom has um, like feet problem and she could barely walk at points, but she never like complained about it. They were just, I love you, son, and they'd go get it. And uh, just growing up since a little kid, seeing that, you know, it made me hungry and it, it made me just like them. Like, I'm just going to get it just like them. And there's no other way for me. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to sit around and wait for something to happen. I'm going to go get it. Are there any specific athletes, fighters, whoever it may be, that you specifically look up to specifically their mindset, because I've, I've never tapped into this side of you with, with, and I've always wanted to, um, why you look at competition, your career, the way that you do with so much, with so much ambition, I should say. Uh, I just try to adopt that, uh, savage mindset. So when I think of savages, you know, the first one that comes to mind is Mike Tyson, man. He's my favorite fighter of all time. Growing up, I actually thought I was going to be a heavyweight. You know, I was like, oh, sh yeah, I'll fight heavyweight. But because Mike, you know, was only 5'10 and doing work. But he's my favorite fighter of all time. And I just think of him, you know, or um, Conor McGregor, man. Those two are my favorite fighters of all time. Um, just when they would think or the way they would do things or the way they would talk about things and then do them is just – it's something special, you know, the way they could bend reality – but I think it's because they work at that. And then there are visionaries, man. You know, once you see something, you, you can change it. Or like, I don't know how to explain it, but the way they break it down and do it is just, it's captivating to me, bro. Like, I don't, I've never seen anyone else do stuff like that.
you know, it's crazy. Or when I talk about you to other fighters, they always have the highest of praises for you. Does that add any additional pressure knowing that there's, I mean, Mike Jones, Andrew Mickelson, obviously Marco Sanchez, Kent Mafileo, all these huge names in the state that is. are praising your name, right? Like, like, does that add any pressure? Because it's like everyone thinks, and, and I say this because of all the people that I've talked to, they think you're next up. They think you are the guy that's going to be carrying a fierce amateur belt in the near future. Then you will move up to pro. Then you will do that and keep moving up these ranks. Does that add any pressure to you at all? No, brother. That just um, that just excites me because you know those are all great guys. Those are all great contenders. Um, they're all savages, man. And you know, I've been in the room with those guys, and uh, for them to say things like that, I I, I appreciate it, man. Because those are guys I look up to, you know. Um, but it doesn't put any pressure on me. Um, if anything, it just makes me more excited. Like um, I'm working harder when dudes say stuff like that, and I'm already working as hard as I can. But it just lights a fire up under my ass where I'm like, hell yeah. You know, if I got the respect of uh, my peers, you know, and I'm only one fight in. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. And there's no there's no uh, other option for, for me. Like if I go to the bottom, I'm going to go back up to the top. So whatever it is, I'm going to find my way up there. You move like a fighter who has a lot of professional fights. I'll put it that way. We all have talked about it, my fr- myself as well as uh, other colleagues at Fierce. Was there any specific fighters that, that you mirrored? I know you mentioned Mike Tyson is one of your favorites, Conor McGregor, but a lot of people kind of veer you more towards almost like the style bender stance and the way that you throw your strikes. Is there anyone that you specifically mirror? For sure, man. Style bender, um, TJ Dillashaw, um, and a little bit of Peter Yan, Conor McGregor. Those four are like my favorite fighters to watch or study. So yeah, I try to add all four of those into my game. Um, with the feints, the, you know, all of it. Austin Cardone, May 31st, Maverick Center. What are you looking forward to facing off a guy who just had an emphatic knockout win? Yeah, man, I'm excited. He has power in his hands. And uh, so I can't make a mistake. I'm looking forward to just showing my arts. He's going to be there. He's going to try and take my head off. And um, I'm going to take his head off or I'm going to take a limb. So I'm just excited to show Whatever happens, man, I'm a mixed martial artist and I can get down, you know. Did you watch his fight against Skylar Bernasconi? Yeah, I think um, I think Julian was fighting that night. So yeah. I was already watching. So, yeah, I did watch that one. What do you make of that matchup specifically in terms of what the forecast might be for it? I don't want you to give away any sort of a game plan, but do you see holes within his game or things that you really need to pay attention to specifically? Oh uh, yeah, I didn't really get to see um too much cuz it was a first round fight, but uh I know he's going to be a tough guy. Um you know, he had that hedges on, so I know he's going to be ready to bang. Um so I'm just going to touch him up wherever it goes. I'm not looking forward to a knockout or a first round finish or a submission. Um I'm just looking to see what he gives me cuz I I I think I'm in every point of the game. I think I'm uh, I'm comfortable. I'm really good. I'm comfortable in every situation. So whatever he gives me, I'll take. Well, he is as saying. smooth as can be. One of the most fun fighters to watch. I promise you, you are going to want to tune into him at Fierce Fighting Championships YouTube page on the prelims for Fierce Fighting Championship 32 going down on May 31st. Tickets on sale right oh. now at FierceFightingChampionship.com. My man, Chris Ventura. Dude, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it, man. We cannot wait for this upcoming fight. Hell yeah. I appreciate you guys and we'll see you May 31st.